I first worked with Chris uh, on a show called Camelot that we did a few years ago uh, in Ireland. Um, I hope we hadn't worked together before. No. No, you directed a, a, radio, a couple of radio plays for a friend of mine, Matthew Brown, and uh, he recommended you to me, although uh, we knew each other socially. Yeah. Uh, Sam went to university with my wife, but we never worked together. We avoided it like the plague. <laughs> uh, and now, Sam is now the head of development at Imaginary Friends, my company, and um, uh, she can't get away. So, so locked, locked in. in. Locked in forever now. Yeah. yeah. But I'm very, I'm very happy about it too. Good job. <laughs> well, there's obviously every, um, every job as a script editor is a bit different because every show is a bit different and so I've done shows in the past where you know, you're working on uh, episodic television and you're working with lots of different writers on series and then that's obviously very different now with working with Chris on a huge single story, a serial story where you're working with one writer so the job changes depending on uh, what the show is um, but a big part of what we do together really uh, is storylining um, and that's that's you know I'm, I'm the person who sits down and is there for Chris to talk to about ideas that he has and that things that we think that might be interesting for characters to go through or to experience and so um, so script editing involves a lot of other things as well as just I think looking at the scripts and pointing out which uh, which bits maybe you know maybe kind of need a little bit of a polish. It's, it's sort of, in a way, it's much further back than that because you you spend a lot of time talking about stories really as a script editor and trying to find a way to, or just trying to sort of be helpful in a sense towards the writer in order them, in order for them to be able to tell their story as effectively as, as possible. I think writing for TV and theatre, they're very different. Uh, and I've never quite worked out how. <laughs> um, I think television is a lot about events. I think you see the events on screen, you're working your way through those. Um, theatre is often more about the conversations and discussions and reactions to events, which often happen off stage, but, but really you often see that the, um, the, the, the ramifications happen on stage, you know, the, the, the effects on the characters. Um, that's not an absolute truth, but it's, it's um, one possible variation. I think, um, uh, funnily enough, now in television you have that longer form as well. You know, you have stories that can go on for 8 or 16 or 40 hours. Um, so that's uh, an extraordinary form that's coming in. Um, and, and television devours plot in a way that theatre doesn't. Theatre needs very little plot, it means a lot of story, doesn't need a lot of plot. Um, and so television is constantly about what happens next, what's the next event, what's the next turn, um, and it, it's really ruthless in how it eats that, but it's also the great joy of television because it's a, often a page turner. Uh, the Returned for me. I love The Returned. Um, I think that's great and I love Orange is the New Black. Um, those two probably... Oh, and I love The Wrong Man as well. So uh, th those three are the ones for me this year, I think. Um, I would have yeah, yeah, guessed those. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just you have, yeah. Sorry, I'm I, getting quick. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I just started watching Orange is the New Black the other night and did you know watch three back to back and I think I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed The Returned. Um, but the other thing that I've come a little bit late to that I'm catching up on this year is Borgen, which um, is, you know, what's brilliant about it is just one of those things that sort of sounds really dry, but actually is just fantastic. And, um, and I think the other thing that, you know, that just talking about kind of what, you know, what television is and what really works on television, it is also seems to be a form where, you know, you can have a, a female lead in something and it just really works. You know, and I think with oranges, uh, with um, oranges and new black, and and with Borgen, you know, you see, you just see a story where, you know, often it would be a story about the male equivalent, about the male politician, the male prime minister, or in you know, in the in the male prison. Yeah, certainly in the movies. Um, oh. Certainly in the movies, that's right. And it sort of feels like um, there's more space uh, to tell stories about uh, the female experience and about women in, in television in a way than there is maybe in movies. I don't know. I don't know, but certainly those are the ones that kind of really stand out for me. 
um, that have been really, really great this year. <laughs> well, uh, somebody who loves television, uh, who loves the form, I think yeah. somebody who can tell a rattlingly good story and who enjoys telling a good story, um, and somebody who's interested in humanity and people, and somebody who's got a good sense of humour. It's like, I think whatever makes a good writer is like, it's like being down the pub with somebody and they're telling you just this great shaggy dog story and it's the same thing, I think those, those people um, make great writers, I think. I think somebody who shows you human existence but in a new way and then once you leaves you wanting to know the next bit, that's what makes a great TV writer.